sunset walk at only funds rest time. Uh, so it is going to be interesting. My first time. Hopefully not my last.
This river empty. Which one? This one. Oh, it's it's flowing. Flowing. No, does it get higher? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two days ago. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's like pictures. Yeah. <laughs> We started from here to that direction. We walk along the, the river. Uh, normally, if we do this kind of a walk, you find that animals this time of the day they are heading down to drink. So you might see something interesting, you might see nothing. So if you don't see anything, you don't blame Abe <laughs> or, or that class or, or France. So. Uh, myself and and Pet and and Franz will be walking on front of you guys behind two guys and then that class will walk at the back of you guys. Okay. So no talking while we are walking. Only if you want to ask question, just feel free to stop us. How you do, you just click your finger or whisking or hit on your thigh. And then you will stop and talk about what you want to know. And then we proceed like that. Our walk is just too short, but we try by all means to make sure that you guys are happy. <clears throat> if you come across something dangerous in the bush, don't try to run. Don't run. Stay behind two rifles, uh, which means myself and and uh, and uh, Franz will be standing on front of you guys, facing to the animals. Trying to save your life. So if you run, I will leave you running with your animal. I can't shoot the animal because if I shoot the animal, the bullet will penetrate on the animal and, and kiss you. So I don't want to do that. So you must know that if you run, I will leave you because you know where are you running. Okay. So I will protect people that will be standing behind me. Those who decided to run, take your run, it's up to you. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, guys, this is your walk. Anything that you feel that is interesting, pose the question to us. If you don't pose the question to us, 
will pose the question to you. Because you don't want to ask us anything, meaning that you know everything in the bush. So we'll ask you. Okay? All good? Good. Thank you very much. Let's start our work without wasting time. All right. What about with our children? Swing five, no? one behind each other. You see this path? Yeah. Yeah. People, they mainly following the path if they are pushing in the path. They like to walk smooth than walking in the thicket. Yeah. So every path, they uh, put in cameras. Okay. Yeah. And next to the road as well, they also put in some cameras. And there are some people that are sitting on the computer now. They can even see us here. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Coming quickly. So are they allowed to execute the potion? Yes. 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 Woodland kingfishers. This place, there are summer visitors. They are here for summer, and then the end of March they will be flying back to their, their country, they, they are from East Africa. Yeah, they, we call them Maghreb Tarbi. Yeah. Okay, you, you done? Yeah. Okay. Just push. I can see far. You can eat, if you want to eat the leaves, it's got uh, mint. So the bush is called a Lipia javanica. And come quickly and there's a cricket here. It's called Amo Ground Cricket. The insect here. Amo Ground Cricket. So this kind of a cricket, if you are farming, they can hammer in your your crops. Mm. Yeah. So they are dangerous. Yeah. Something like a spike. You see the spike? Mm. So this spike is the self defense self defend. Okay. They use this spike to defend themselves. They can step. So they can't fly, they just walk. They can't fly. They can't fly. When they are a full grown one, they end up burying themselves underground. And they also lay the eggs underground. The, the eggs for this one takes about seven years underground. Mm -hmm. Seven years. Without the hatching. Yeah. If there is no food, you won't see this stuff. Because they can... Uh, a reed that this year there's no food. So they know that they won't survive. So they can't uh, breed. Only when there's a food, a lot of food, that is where you can see the kind, this kind of stuff. So I said the bush is called the Lipia Javanica or your lavender fever tea. Look 
us how big of the a giraffe footprint. A giraffe footprint here. So, spirited hoof animal, they are ruminant. There are four chambers. And they are very good in digesting system. They have rumen, ruminant, and obamazam, and radiculus, and the last one is which one? Obamazam. Those are different kind of stomach on the four chambers uh, animal. So they are very good in the digesting system. When they eat grass or leaves or from the tree, you won't able to read the leaves in the dung because they are well digested. But in the high gut fermenter, look like your elephant, uh, rhino, a uh, warthog, zebra, and what? And, and uh, hippo. If they eat something, you can easily see that this animal had an apple leaf or this animal had this kind of a tree. Because they are poor in digesting, you can easily see the leaves in the dark. That's what we call them hard gut fermenter. And hard gut fermenters animals, they are thick skinned animals. Uh, to get rid of parasites, they have to wallow in the mud in order to to get rid of that parasite. Because we do have a bond ticks that are penetrating on the thick skin animals. So it's the hardest tick. It's not easy for themselves to just take off that ticks. They have to roll in the mud and after they visit the tree and they wrap themselves in order to, to get rid of that bond tick. That is how they get rid of the bond tick, those animals. Okay. You can easily to read the leaves inside their dung because they are very poor in digesting. You can see the leaves. So does that mean they must eat more? Or? No, no, I mean uh, the, the teeth, oh, the molars, oh. is, is uh, warning out. Oh, okay. So when you chew something, they don't chew properly. Okay. So that is why you can easily see the, the leaves in the dung. Love that. You see the twigs and all those kind of stuff. The leaves is from the elephant. So if you can come across one of the ruminants, I will show how is the different. You won't see these fibers. Yeah. Ruminant. Uh, you want to ruminate is like you know your cow is a ruminant because it does have four chambers. They've got four stomach. One, two, three, four stomach. That is why while they are sitting in the crawl, they regurgitated the food and they reach out. And they reach out again to the second stomach, like that. And when they finish, they regurgitate another one, and they reach out, like, up until the food becomes fine. Yeah. So those are the animals called them ruminants. So hard gut fermenters, they, when they take some food, they just put in the molars in the chew and swallow, it's finished. It's going straight to the chamber because it's only one stomach. After the chamber, comes out. That is why it's like that. Yeah. So here, that is why in the Kruger we don't allow people to off-road. Because we do have some creatures that are... You don't see them uh, when you are driving. You might find yourself driving over this pile of sand. And this pile of sand is something that if you can dig there, you can find something. Uh, we have dung beetles. Dung beetles, there are more than a thousand different species. But we're only categorizing them three groups. We have uh, telecooperate, uh, endocooperate, and cleptocooperate. 
three different groups, but there are more than a thousand different species. So during this time of the year, uh, they roll the balls and poop the single egg in the ball. And then they find a place and then they dig and bury their ball. And what is going to happen when the egg hatched? That uh, love will start feeding inside the ball. Feeding inside the ball, it will take about six months. And then it comes out around September. There. So that is where you're starting to see uh, a dung beetles flying around. Or you come across them rolling the, the balls on the ground. Specific dung or any dung? No, they go for ruminate animals. Dung. Because it's the softer bone, a dung, to, to roll it. Yes, I said that they are well digested. Yes. They can't use the elephant dung to make the ball. They can use the rhino dung to make the ball. They can use the zebra dung to make the ball. You see that there are fibers. So it's not going to be easy for, for that dung beetle to roll the ball. That's what they go for a ruminate, uh, animal dung. All right. Uh, if you look at here guys, there's this white stuff here. This white stuff is a, a bad urine or droppings together on the same place. Because bed they only have a single hole which is called the claw worker. When the base decided to defecate, he also urinated at the same time. That is why these stuff they are all in the same place. So there are some animals that link on this in order to extract calcium. Leopard tortoise, giant land snail, and your porcupine. They come and just link here in order to extract the calcium. So nothing that is wasted in the bush. The dropping from the animals, other animals, they use it as a food. The dropping of the animals, other animals, they use it as a, you know, as a shelter. You know, different type of animals, they use the dung from the animals on their own to benefit something in the bush. That's what is happening. So it's from the bay. The hollows there. Uh, it's called the ventilation shell. So this is where the termat mount the termites use that hollow for breathing out and in, in breathing in. So way back 200 years ago, uh, there were people that stayed inside the Kruger National Park, and then Paul Kruger came here and ship everyone to outside and then put the fence. That is why we have this Kruger National Park now. And during that time, it was only one ranger that used to patrol from south to, to north, riding back of the horse. That guy was called the Saga Heli Voluta. So one day on his way back to Skukuza, between Chokwani and Satara, he came across lioness. One female lion dropped on top of him while he's on top of the horse and grabbed him and that guy fell on the ground and then he dragged him for 100 meters and then he took his shift knife and stepped to the lion twice on the heart and then the lion rejected him and then that guy crawled 5 meters 
to the tree called the Ledwood tree. He climbed on top by himself with a self belt. The ran 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 back the horse ran back to the to the camp. And his assistant wondering why the horse came back by himself. And then he started to take horse back. Find the ranger right on top of the, the tree. And he carried the ranger for four days from the spot to the Komati boat. It was the nearest hospital. And then they staged him and then they put him in the train, sent him to Babatu. That is where he survived. And then if you want to see the skin knife and his rifles at Skukusa Library. That range of Hilly Voluta Memorial. So uh, during that time, when one of the members passed on, they used to bury the member next to the Temat Mount. Because they were using the Temat Mount as a mark. And nowadays we are buying the tombstone. Uh, way back they were using this kind of a, a mount to bury the member next to it. My uh, grandfather passed on in 1958. But my father took me other day and showed me uh, my grandfather is grave, still active from 1958. I was born in 1969. I was not even born during that time, but this drive is still active. I'm talking about it now. It's still active because they were using this kind of stuff to bury their members next to the Temat Mount. So Temat Mount lasts more than 150 to 160 years. Surviving because there's a queen there. That queen, she only works to lay the temats every day. If there is a shortage of uh, workers, uh, they quickly run to the queen and tell the, the queen that uh, the workers are, are shortage there and then she will reproduce the workers. If, the, if there is a, a maintenance a shortage, they will quickly go to the to the queen and report that hey, we're running short of maintenance. She will reproduce the, the maintenance. She worked like that up until up until 200 or 150 years. So they last long. Uh, Tamaz and uh, leopard toy toys. They are they live forever. You know the leopard toy toys. Yes, they live forever. That's why. Okay, that's why you uh, you find that the chief. Okay, that's why the chief uh, way back they used to live forever because they were eating the heart of the leopard totos, uh, believing that they will uh, live forever. Yeah. Okay. Let's carry on this elephant. Yeah, 
天皇大臣の椅子が座り、陛下に。How big is it? Yeah, it's actually in India. They're texting me? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Three, four, at the back here. Can you see how big is it? Huh? Yeah. yeah, it's got a short legs. He has got a short legs and barrel body. Oh. It looks like it's, my, it's got a big body or a heavy body that cannot run faster. Hippo can run faster. Mm. Approximately 30, uh, plus minus 30 to 40 kilometers an hour, Hippo can cover up that speech. Mm. In an hour. Mm. He can run very fast. So they eat at night, normally they eat the grass. Mm. Only grass. They are grass eaters, they don't eat leaves. Yes, otherwise, when the drought comes, where there's no rains, what happens? The hippos are the only animals that they will suffer first. Because they go for grass, they don't go for other materials. Then the other animals like impala, buffaloes, yes, giraffes, they can go for the trees. Okay, and the buffalo, they can go for the leaves as well. Take the leaves from the ground. Then in order to survive. Elephants, it's obvious. Elephants they do a lot of stuff, can dig even on the ground to get the roots, the bulbs, even pushing the trees in order to get those roots and other stuff. Okay? But the hippo are the animals, the animals that first will be suffer. Okay? Good. Thank you. Uh, the flower here is called the Bushfeld Crossandra. Bushfeld Crossandra. Uh, these flowers, they are only active this time of the year. You don't see them during the winter time around dry period. You don't see them. They're only active after the rain around this time of the year. Bushfeld Crossandra flowers. You use it for medicine? No, no. I don't know nothing about that. Uh, you know something about it? No. When I said medication, I understand. He's thinking about the underconda or something. I'm <laughs> looking for these kind of flowers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of stuff that are shooting out this time of the year. Of the year. Some will know, some will don't know. So, okay, some will see. So, how that fermenter? Your hippo dung. So, the hippo male, when, when they walk out at night, they have to mark their territory so that they can remember where is their water hole. So they just stood against the tree and defecated and used the tail to scatter the dung. So they say way back, he first went to the god to request to stay in the water. And the god says that, Hippo, you're too big, my friend. I'm not going to allow you to stay in the water because you're going to eat all the fishes for the crocodile. And then the hippo says, no, God, I won't do that. Every time when I go out and defecate, I'll make sure that I'll scatter my dung in order to show you that there is no fish bones. So God always go and check and find that he really, there's no fish bones. That is why the hippo still allow him to stay in the water. Otherwise, they would be already kicked out. Okay. <laughs> eggs on the African, uh, on the milkweed tree. So a milkweed tree is poisonous plant. So when you lay the eggs on the milkweed tree and when the egg hatched and the larvae will start feeding on the leaves of the milkweed in order to extract the cardiac 
glucoside. So cardiac glucoside is the poison that affects the heart muscles. If you eat or animal trying to eat this butterfly, you die by heart attack. Okay, cardiac, it's the heart muscle. And what do you call the butterfly? The African monarch. African monarch butterfly. But we do have a spotted joker that mimics the color of the African monarch in order to be safe. So, but they are not really poisonous, that one. But because of they want to be safe, they copy the color of the African monarch so that they can be safe as well. So, animals are also clever. It's not only a hyena that is wearing the, the lion skin for protection. So even the small insects, they also do the same. See the truck the water bag they were here. So you need it here. See the nail, if he wants to pick up and that the female she's ready for mating, will come here and sniff. And they take the message to the Jacobson uh, organ. And the Jacobson organ it is the one that will tell the water bag male that. This female here is ready for mating. And then they will start tracking that female and then they mate. That is how they do. And you remember animals, they mate well, the female she's ostras. She's ostras. Uh, we don't mate with a woman if she's mistress. Yes. So animals the other way around. They only go for female when the female she's building. That is where they go and mate. Yeah, here's a hyena. She will get eaten tonight. <laughs> hey, the giraffe. Yeah. Lots of them here. Yeah. So how far do you think they are? Yeah. Close Less than a... Not more than 500 meters. Mm. It's very, very close. Closer. If you look carefully, there is a spider web behind there, also spider as well. There is a golden op web spider. So the spider spinning the web in order to, to catch the prey. So spiders are divided by two groups. We have more Golomorpha in the area near Morph. All the spiders that they can spin the web, they are falling under area near Morph. 
the burrowing spiders are falling under Mogolomov. So Mogolomov, they are hunting like a lion. They go at night and hunt some insects and then they catch and drag the bag to their burrow. So this one, they are lying on, on the web. Something to fly, get trapped and quickly run to the prey and inject the venom and end up. So that the enzyme can cook the inner stuff of the prey. There after that, a uh, spider will run quickly and start sucking the juice. Yeah. So, there's a damsel fly. Yeah. You see, if you look at this damsel fly, you can say it's the dragon fly, but this is a dragon fly. Damsel fly, when it's sitting, the wings is facing four, four sides. Dragonfly, when sitting, the wings is like this. Mm. So, ant lion, the wings is facing back. So, this is a damson fly. This is a dragonfly. The wings are like this. Also, when it's sitting, it's like this, but this one, when it's sitting, and this one it can flap the wings to fly. That's why it's called the damson fly. All right. If you look at these molars, don't touch the bones, eh? because you don't know what kills this animal in the bush. We are advisable people to not touch the bones in the bush that you find that is lying on the floor. Because we do have a disease that is called anthrax. Anthrax, it can last more than 40 years underground, waiting for the dry period, that is where they can be active and start killing the animals. So if you read the molars, it was a young elephant, this one. If you can read the molars, that's why they say that elephants have a six set of molars. This is a one set and then the second set. That's just in the first set in the number last. When the elephant is growing, uh, uh, when they're becoming uh, old, from the 30 years to 40, they start losing the molars. That is where you find that the elephants end up not chewing the food. The food comes out like that because they don't have molars at all. When, uh, they lose molars like a human being. So when the molars are finished, they don't chew the food properly at all. So it's flattened molars. So it tells you something that this animal is a grinder animal. Grinder animal. They don't have a side cutter like your kudu, your giraffe. Giraffe molars, they have got side cut on the side to enable the animal to, to cut the branches on the tree. So this one, they take the branches and they put them in the mouth and then they chew. That's why the molars are flattened like this. So from the 65 years, the elephants don't chew the food properly at all. How old do they be? They go up to 75 if you farming them. Because if you farming them, you can give, some, give them some bananas and so natural 65 years. That is where you find that the elephants are hanging along the river and looking some soft stuff to survive, end up dying by heart attack or lungs uh, problems along the river. And they're also killed by a urine that is coming from the mice. There's a certain mice that 
urinating the leaves of the tree and the elephants come and eat. And then the urine acid affected the heart muscles. And then that elephant end up dying by heart attack. So the disease is called the leptospirosis diseases that is killing the elephant. That is that is from the, the, the bush mice. It's called the acacia bush mice that brings the leptospirosis that kills the elephant. This is called anting. Anting. Anting, what is happening with the bait? If they want to get rid of all the oil, they visit the ant nest and then they open the wings to allow the ants to climb on top of it. And when they are on top of the bait, that bird will shake the wings. <laughs> 